Hello, you're on Purpose Pod, I'm George. Welcome to a new episode on this series on setting up load balancer infrastructure. And today, I will be configuring rules to allow web traffic to flow through my load balancer. And so, if this series and the content of this channel lines up with your interest, hit the subscribe button and join me in this journey of learning by doing. So, let's start coding. Now that I have a load balancer that is rejecting requests by default, I'm going to set up a user-friendly URL that will expose access to my load balancer. So let me head to my main.tf. What I need is a Route 53 record for this resource. So let me go ahead and set that up. I need a zone ID property for this resource. And this property needs to point to an existing Route 53 hosted zone. And to pull the reference to this existing resource, I will need to head to my data.tf and define the data reference block for my hosted zone. I need to use the same domain in my certificate data reference for my hosted zone name property. Cases like this where we see repeating references are good opportunities to refactor on the fly. And so instead of hard coding the domain, I will make my code extensible and create a new variable. And to simplify my setup, I will set a default value on this variable for now and set it to publishSpot.ml, which is my domain. And then on my data.tf, I can then replace all the hard-coded references to my domain to use the new variable. And then on my main.tf, I can then update the zone ID property and point this to my hosted zone data reference. I'm going to use an A record for my setup, and so I will add a type property and set the value to A. I'm also going to set the name property, which will be the subdomain for my URL. What this means is that my load balancer will be accessed through the URL, myurl.publishspot.ml. And then finally, I will add an alias block to configure this record to point to my load balancer. Inside this alias block, I will add the name property and point this to the DNS name of my load balancer resource. I will also add the zone ID property, which I will point to the associated zone ID of my load balancer. You might find it a little bit confusing to have two zone ID properties inside this resource, but to differentiate these two, the first zone ID, which is a main property of the resource, points to a zone that you maintain. Well, I maintain. The second zone ID, which is inside the alias block, points to a zone that AWS maintains for the AWS load balancer provisioning. I'm also going to add a property called evaluate 
target health and set this to true. Setting this property to true means telling AWS to verify the health of the resources before allowing the web request traffic to flow. And now let me head to my VS Code terminal and start updating my infrastructure. And as usual, I will start by exporting my TF workspace environment variable and set my AWS credentials using AWS Vault. And now I'm going to start running Terraform in it. And then Terraform plan. And then Terraform apply to update my actual infrastructure. And to verify if my latest infrastructure changes are working, I'm going to run a curl command against my new fully qualified domain name. And that returned a 401 response, which means my request was rejected. And this is what I'm expecting. On the first episode of this series, I have set up my load balancer to redirect access to google.com. And so to reinstate this, let me head back to my main.tf. And then all the way to the end of this file, I will introduce a new code block that will enable the redirection. And this involves creating a new resource called AWS load balancer listener role. One of the things that I have configured to allow public access to my load balancer is to attach a listener to the load balancer. To quickly review what this entails, let's head to the code block. In this resource block, I have configured my listener to listen on port 443. What this means is that my load balancer will only pick up web requests that are flowing through port 443. And then my load balancer will find an appropriate rule to do further action. And this is what I'm going to set up today. And if it does not find any rule, it will use the default action that I have defined and the request is rejected with 401 response code. Now let me head to the end of this file and start writing my listener rule. I need to associate this rule with the listener resource we just saw. And so I will add a property called listener ARN and point this to the listener resource ARN. The next property that I need to set inside this block is the action property. This defines what the load balancer will do with the web request. And to redirect to Google, I will add a type property and set this to redirect. And then I will add the redirect block inside the action block. Inside this block, I will add the status code and set it to HTTP 301. This means my load balancer will enrich the web request trail with status code 301 to indicate a redirection. I also need to add the host property and set this to google.com. And then the port with a value 443. And the protocol set to HTTPS. Because this is a rule resource, 
I need to add a set of conditions that needs to be satisfied before the action is performed. So inside this resource, I will add a condition block. There are several types of conditions you can implement, but today I will use the host header condition, which means I will add the host header block. This block will need values property, which will contain all the valid host headers that will be processed inside this rule. I'm going to add the fully qualified domain name that I have set up earlier as one of the values. Now that my Google redirect has been reinstated, let's add another rule for a fixed response. So let me add a new listener rule resource by duplicating this existing block. I'm going to change the name of this resource to rule2. And then instead of redirect, I'm going to set the type of this rule to fixed response. We have seen how the fixed response is set up with the default action on my load balancer listener resource. So let's have a look at that block. So what I'm going to do is copy this default action block right here and then head back to my listener rule. Plug that in there. Change this to action and get rid of the previous one. I'm going to change the status code to 200 and change the message body to something else. And then I'm going to add a new condition block. And instead of using host header, I'm going to use path pattern. This block also needs a values property And then I'm going to set the values to contain slash my test. Now that I've got two rules that I've set up, I'm going to head to my VS Code terminal and update my infrastructure. I'm going to run Terraform plan. and then run Terraform Apply. And now I'm going to switch to my browser and verify my changes. So if I plug in my new fully qualified domain name, That redirects me to google.com, which means my redirect rule works. And if I access my new fully qualified domain name with slash my test at the end, and I'm getting the output message that I'm expecting. But this setup has a loophole, and I'm going to show you what it is. If I plug in my load balancer public DNS on my browser, I get the unauthorized message, which is what I expect. However, if I add slash my test at the end of this URL, I am not getting the unauthorized message, which means the web request was not rejected. So how do we fix this? Let me head back to my VS Code. And to fix the loophole that we just saw, I need to update the last listener rule that I have set up. I don't want my load balancer DNS to be accessed directly. And so I need to add a new host header condition in this rule.
and then I will add my new fully qualified domain name similar to what I've done with my first row. And now let me head to my VS Code terminal and update my infrastructure. So firstly, I'm going to run Terraform plan. and then run Terraform apply. And now back to my browser, if I try to refresh this page, that now says the unauthorized message, which means my request has been rejected. And that's all I have for today. Stay tuned as I continue to explore better ways of implementing load balancer infrastructure. In the meantime, let me know your thoughts in the comments below and send me some likes if you find this useful. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you like the content on this channel. Until next time, keep learning and stay safe. See ya.